46 millimeter or five and three quarter diameter axle is a project we started some 12, almost 15 years ago when our companies came together about a universal global axle. And so this will fit with all of our applications here in North America. It will fit, as Mike noted, with our current brake packages. You see a disc brake there, which likely will be how we bring it to market. It could also be done with a drum brake if we elect to do so. And on the tire and rim combinations, which is also very important for the marketplace, especially our fleets, they like to run different singles, duals, different outsets on the rims. So it's very important that the axle allow that flexibility. As we noted, what will be proprietary is the hub. The hub will be basically a North American standard. It will fit with all the tires and rims, but it will have, as I'll show you in the future, um, a drive axle or an axle shaft. So obviously into the gearbox and the generator, which will create and generate the electricity. Okay, so I'm gonna run right here. Here's our proprietary, when I say a proprietary hub, again, what you're looking at is a European design. It has a different wheel offset. We would have a North American version for that. That's under development. You can see the axle shafts inside the axle. Now this is unique for a trailer axle. Typically a trailer axle has been hollow. Gearbox, the differential, so that you don't have tire scrubbing when you turn corners and that type of thing, as well as the generator. And in the next slide, oh, sorry, back too fast. Back up one more, back up some of this. Back up one more, there you go. All right. Here we go. As you can see, we're going to have the axle shafts coming the hubs generate going into the differential, obviously rotational energy going into the gearbox, driving the electric generator. So this is what's unique about this axle with the drive shafts inside the axles. Again, normally a trailer axle is hollow. <coughs> Talk about the market here real quick, where we're, where we're targeting. When you look at this, we've already spoken to it, the TRU's uh, refrigeration unit truck trailer TRU. Uh, here in North America, I mean, I would say 20% of all the drive vans built, if you will, of the van trailers are reefers. So that's a significant market. This is every year somewhere around 40 to 45,000 are built uh, a year. We all know um, from that standpoint, it varies depending on the market, but it's a good portion of the market. We're looking at that new market. Now, typically the TRU right now, most, are going to be uh, diesel powered, as we noted. There are some hybrids now, you'll see, but historically obviously a diesel will generate emissions and will also generate noise. As we, if you will, migrate to a 100% zero emissions battery, you'll see here that the TRUs to the battery electric unit, that the fuel tank goes away and you're going to have a battery pack instead. So that gives you an idea of, of what's happening so that you can drive this system. So we noted earlier, Mike said that we need to collaborate with some partners, that we think we are one part of a three-part system for a total system solution for the trailer, for the fleet and the trailer OEM. Of course, number one is our track, our axle. So in, typically in North America, you're running tandems. The first axle would have the track, our system. It will generate the electricity, but this would go into the battery pack. The battery pack controls the state of charge, the energy distribution, and we're working and collaborating with that. Also with the battery pack, as noted, Mike noted, that there would be an uh, auxiliary shore power if it were parked at that. And three, of course, is the um, refrigeration unit. There's two major suppliers, Thermal King and Carrier, we're, we're working with them, but they are working. I think they've all announced their battery electric version for a TRU unit. That is something they've been developing. I think we'll see it here today or tomorrow at the show. So, um, how does this all work? What is it from a system solution standpoint? I think it was maybe at least 10 years, 12 years ago, I was at the IAA or EAA um, show in Hanover, Germany, where we had it was a Schmitz carbable trailer that was all made up of solar panels on the trailer. The 
if the concept was, hey, why not harness the energy of the sun? It'll drive the trailer refrigeration in there. The problem with that is you just cannot put out enough power. So you have to look at how you might do this. One way, of course, is to have an all-electric tractor, and then you have the battery pack on the trailer. Either way, you share the energy for running the refrigeration unit as you're going down the road or you're parked or what have you. If it's parked by itself, as you can see in the lower right hand, you'll see that it short power. You can plug it in wherever you're at, at the distribution center or wherever it's at, as long as you have that short power. The problem with this, that version, if you will, that solution, is when you're on the road, you either have to steal the electrical power from the tractor, otherwise it will not charge the battery. We believe our solution with the recuperative axle is a better solution, and I'll, I'll get into the details in just a minute. So what you're seeing is basically there's this shows a trailer park, but as you're going down the road, it would generate and keep the state of charge. So basically, you can maintain it while you're running anywhere from New York to California. You really wouldn't have to worry about it. So that's another system. And of course, there could be some hybrids or whatever out there. So when, when the industry is challenged like this, to think about a zero emissions given by regulatory like CARB or the, the government, you know, it's great to see how people look for creative solutions.